Welcome back to the garage guys. Today we are not working on Project Shed. We're working on my fiance's father's... Focus, there we go, I can point to it now. Uh, he needs some new rear discs and new rear pads, so that's what we're doing today. Changing focus brakes. So let's have a look at the tools on that we have. We've got jack and a stand, so we can do one side at a time. Got some pliers, got a torque wrench and a breaker bar, socket set. I have a, a roll of brake cleaner that's rolled there and the new discs and the new pads and something to sit on. So these Ford wheels, and they've got a cap on them which make them from an 18mm to a 19mm. So make sure you use a 19mm six-sided and you'll be able to undo them ones. And obviously make sure you get your locking wheel nut key. Do that one. So I'm going to break these off now. Now it's time to get the car in the air. So we've jacked up on the sill where it's safe to do so, so it's not damaging the side skirt. And then I've dropped the car on an extra stand just there to hold the weight. You can see the tyres just off the floor, which will give us all the room we need, and it's nice and safe to do so. So now it's time to get the wheel off. So here we have a close up of the brakes. Now there's a little bit of life left in the pads, you can just see down there. But the disc itself <laughs> it is quite worn um, and when driving, when braking you can feel a little bit of juddering in the pedal and that's because these are quite worn so they've got a really good lip now on both sides um, so it's time to change them. So we need to take these caps off the back of here. One at the bottom, one and one at the top. Take the caliper off. That means we can take the pads off, which means you can get to the bolts to do the carrier, get the carrier off, get the disc off. Uh, and then we can look at squashing the, the piston back. Um, and we'll move from there. So the caps just pull off and it reveals a 7mm Allen key. Which hopefully you can get into like that. And then it's just a case. I've loosened them off just like that. So once you've, once you've undone the top bolt and the bottom bolt, and you have, make sure you've got your handbrake off, you'll be able to loosen it slightly. So then the next thing we're going to do is undo the spring at the front. So this is the spring that I was on about at the front. We just need to pry this out like so. Come on, you bugger. There we go. So the spring's off, and the caliper will come off. Like so. And that allows you to get your pads off. That will not come off. There you go. The old pads are off. You can see there's a bit of life left in them. There's not much in the disc. And you can't put uh, old pads on a new disc because that's just, that's just a no-no. So now we need to remove this carrier by doing the bolts on the other side and we'll take this disc off. So when you're moving the caliper around, because it's still attached to the flexios, just make sure that you don't damage it by letting it hang and stretch. So I've got the weight support at the moment on the hub. You can tie wrap them out of the way if your pipe's long enough, but there's nothing to actually tie wrap this one to in this car. So at the moment I've just got it sat on, on the front of the hub. So there's two 13mm bolts that I'm going to really struggle to get into. So I've got a long socket, long 13mm socket, which just clears for the ratchet, so I'm not going to undo it. So I'll undo this top one, I'll undo the bottom one, and I'll come back to you. 
So what Ford have kindly done is they put a hole right in line where the last the bottom carrier bolt is, which is nice. It means you can get your freaking ratchet in, which is good. Which is good. Um, carriers off. Carriers there. I need to move this out of the way again now. Took it up there out of the way. This will come off somehow. Now there's no bolt on the front to undo, so I'm assuming it's just going to knock off. But I don't actually know. I'm going to get my mallet. Uh, yes, it did require a hammer, not a mallet, because it was a bit tight. But the old disc is now off. Ready to clean this up and start rebuilding it with the new stuff. So, because we're going to be pushing fluid back into this reservoir when we push the pistons back, we're going to need to put a ring of paper around there, just as the fluid level comes back up. It's quite low anyway, so you can tell it's well warm. Um, in case anything spills, you want to catch it in the paper so you don't strip any paint off. So I'm just going to make a ring of paper around that. So there's a ring of paper, I've sat the cap on, just so no dirt lands in it. It's always worth checking your new ones against your old ones. They are pretty much identical. The only difference is this has got a, a lip on the inner all the way around. With this, it's got bits of... My garage door. This has got bits of lips. Other than that, it's the same. But I'm going to put some copper slip on here. Just hopefully so the disc doesn't weld to that like the last one did. And then I'll be sticking some copper slip on this side too. So the alloy wheel doesn't weld to that as well. Like this one has been stuck on. Um, if you look at the thickness of that one, it's a bit awkward to do this side by side. That's still the same thickness, but there's such a good lip on both sides, it's lost lots of its structural rigidity. And because it's warm, like, uh, warm, worn, it's warped, and that's what's making the juddering under break in. Uh, either this side or that side, or both of them connected, is making the juddering. So I'm going to grease this one up, get, get this on. So the last thing to remember is because this has been in its bag to stop it rusting, it's been covered in like a lubricant, like almost like WD. So you need to clean it off. So we're going to clean it up with some brake cleaner. And then that way it'll be absolutely fine when it's on the car. So we're going to do that as well. So I've now got a wire brush I'm just going to use to help clean off the crap that's built up on the carrier where the pads sit. Then you're going to bolt the carrier back on. I'm not going to grease it up until I've bolted it on. What you're also going to be required to do is push back the piston because the piston works its way out as the brakes wear and we've put new or we're putting new ones on we need to squash it all the way back down so you can fit your new discs and pads on otherwise it just won't go on. So I've got my brake wheel rewind kit on so I can push this piston back. That's just a case of twisting the piston back in because it's on a big giant thread and what this is doing is it's squashing the fluid back up the pipes and then into the reservoir in the engine bay. Now that is the reason why we took the cover off. If you remember earlier in the video, took the cover off, I put the ring of paper around it to stop any leaks and that's it, our pistons all the way back. So I just need to somehow un undo me because <laughs> that's gone tight now. I need to undo that and then I can get it off. So now you can see the pistons all the way back. I'm hoping you can, I think it's just unfocused. There we go. The piston is all the way back, which means we can put the new pads in, grease up, uh, grease up where the pads sit, put the new pads in, put that back on, tighten up, and we're done on this side. So here we have our new pads. The chamfered on the edge, 
you can see that that allows um well it helps bed them in and less cracky me because though less squealing and stuff like that so put that in there this one in there and grab our piston and drop it over the top we tighten up the bolts put the wheel back on uh, and we'll do the other side and I'll show you what you do at the end so the bolts are tight at the back I've just got to stick this spring back in now stick one side on like so get the other one in the hole Ah, pain the butt these up. Alright, it's kind of in. You just need to then make sure you press it in. So I'm hoping you can see on camera if we pull it back a little bit. So your spring tucks under there, into that hole, into that hole, and under there. And that pulls the caliper over the over the um, pads. It's bolted. From the other side, you just need to stick them little plastic caps back on. And I'll find where I put them. I actually know where I put them. I'll find them in a sec. Um, and then once you press the pedal, it'll push the piston out, which will squash the pads, and it'll get rid of any slack on this piston here. So now this side's all built up. It's just a case of putting the wheel back on. It's got the caps in the back now, so just put the wheel back on. Um, put them on tight. I'll do the other side and then we'll talk them after, talk the bolts after. So I filmed the other side off camera because there was no point filming it all twice. Uh, it's all back together. You need to make sure that you, you talk your wheel nuts. One. And then I'll show you what to do uh, with your foot pedal in a second. So now you've talked your wheels up. To make sure that you pump your brake pedal, you'll feel that the first few pumps are really slack as it's moving the fluid back out to the pistons. That's nice and tight now, so now we just need to check under the bonnet. So we can check on this now. The levels come up a bit, not a lot, but obviously it would have come up more, but we've pumped the brake pedal. So we're going to put the cap back on. This could do with topping up if I'm honest, but I don't have any fresh top four fluid. So I'm not going to do it in the moment. And that's underneath the engine done. So thank you for watching the how to replace the rear brakes on a Focus video. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. If so, leave a like, subscribe. And I'll see you in another video. And don't forget, if you want to see more of my footage, subscribe by pressing up here. And if you want to see the next video, click just here. Thank you all.